Mmm. Hey guys, that's right, it's Sunday. And if it's Sunday, you know what we're doing around here. That's right. We tear up the kitchen, baby. Welcome to another episode of Cooking with Cookie. Here a while back, one of our subscribers, uh, AR Buddhist, requested Coco Vine. So tonight it is Coco Vine. I sent my wife out today to go get me some chicken for this cucumber, and she surprised me. She never fails to surprise me. She came back with a special chicken. That's right, a special chicken. What's special about a chicken? Oh, I promise you, there's something special about this one. This chicken is a capon. What is a capon? I had to ask myself, and I wasn't happy with the description. A cape ball is a chicken that's been a rooster that's been capenized. I give you one guess what capenized means. That's right, fellas. <laughs> Got his nuts. They said it makes him more tender. They said it makes him more juicy. I don't believe it. We're going to find out tonight. Looking at this free range. Free range for what? Where he's going? He ain't got nowhere to go. He got his nuts. Show us the sacrifices were worth it, my man. Stay tuned, guys. We got a good show coming for you. Keep on. Don't get keeping eyes. I've got some nice organic carrots that I'm going to cook down in this. Listen, you don't need to cut these in, in very small rings. I want to want them just a, a nice medium, about, a, about an inch. Mushrooms. So I've got some big mushrooms here. We're just going to kind of quarter them like this. You know, you want, a, you want a nice, you don't want to cut your mushrooms too thin because they're just going to disintegrate into the pan. You know, in this recipe, Coco Man is not a, not a very spicy dish. It's not, it's full of flavor, but it's not uh, what you would call hot or spicy. Um, <clears throat> I got a serrano pepper, so I'm probably going to use about half of this serrano pepper in it. And listen, that's just because that's my taste. So to start this dish off before we brown our chicken, it uh, usually calls for pancetta. If you can't find pancetta, you can use just a nice smoky bacon. We got turkey bacon. You can substitute turkey bacon and you know what, it's gonna be fantastic. Uh, don't be scared of turkey bacon. So all right guys, here we go. We've got our, uh, all our ingredients cut up, our veggies over there. We've got to quarter this baby up. We're gonna quarter up our capo and chicken. Oh, I'll tell you what, this is like Christmas right here. We got the liver, liver, the innards. Guess what? On this recipe, I didn't see that you had the liver and all that to it, but the, the liver is definitely going in there. I'm an innards guy. I like uh, the hearts, livers, uh, all that good stuff. Oh, look at this. That's his neck. Get your mind out of the gutter. I told you that was gone a long time ago. <laughs> Almost feel guilty doing this. Another knife. Second knife this guy's seen in his life. Nobody ever accused me of being a butcher, I can tell you that. You're looking for the joints. You want to catch the joints, and that's where you want to separate that chicken. There we go. It's like that. Nice. Got yeah, beautiful, beautiful chicken meat. Give it a little, a little pull. Got to get through some of these ribs sometimes. It's, it can be a little, a little messy. It's all right. Now guys, there's a few pieces of meat on here and I'm going to show you in just a minute that I'm not going to throw away. Set this over here for right now. 
So some people will leave the rib, the ribs on. I don't like to leave the ribs on breast when I cook it in a stew or anything else. On your dark meat, you have big bones. Those big bones, they just slide right out. On uh, the breast, around the rib cage, it, uh, it tends to splinter. And I feel like, uh, especially like in a gumbo or stew or anything like that, I feel like the whole time I'm eating it, when they cook the, the rib uh, cage in it or the bones in the uh, breast meat, then I'm picking bones out of everything. And just don't like that. Guys, look at this big, beautiful breast on, uh, on this rooster. I'm telling you. I mean, it's, this, this would really be a good uh, chicken to, to um, bake or stew down whole because it's just, I mean, it's, it's beautiful. I mean, it's beautiful, beautiful. I'm hoping that it's going to be as tender. We're going to see. Normally, rooster is a, is a tough, uh, or even even old bacon hens. They uh, they're not as tender as a, a nice young cut up fryer. But we're going to see. We will see. So along this back, nice little morsel of meat. So right here, guys. So it's a little joint right here in the back. See if I can get this out. On the back, it's called the oyster. Man, this is like the most tender on a turkey or any poultry right on the back. Normally larger birds, you know, so that you can get to it. All right, guys, we got us uh, a nice cut up chicken right here. Nice cap. Oh, the cap. Oh. This is a step. You don't necessarily have to do this step, but I like it. I think it adds some flavor. Uh, I like to take, and I take the chicken, and I've got some wine. You can use any wine that you like. I suggest using wine that you like to drink. This is a nice Cabernet. Don't go expensive on the wine because it's just a marinade right now. I'm going to tell you, a big red works good on the chicken. On Coco Vin, big red, bold flavors. That's what I like. So we're going to put this. I'm gonna marinate this chicken in the wine for three, four hours. Uh, go as long as you like. If you wanna let it sit overnight, that's fine too. The alcohol is just gonna penetrate that meat. The wine is gonna add those nice earthy flavors to it. It's gonna be beautiful. It, it just builds on this uh, dish. So here we go guys, ready to put it together. We uh, got our, our pot hot right here. We're gonna go in with our bacon, pancetta, turkey bacon, uh, whatever you choose. What we're gonna do is gonna let this sear off and get nice and crispy. It's almost like the bacon bits. We're gonna get this going, then we're gonna pull it out and uh, saute so the rest of our vegetables and these bits will go back in a little bit later on, we'll show you. I've transferred the oil that that made over to this Dutch oven. Don't want to crowd the chicken in there, so we made a small adjustment to the Dutch oven. So here we go, guys. We're going in with our chicken. We're going to sear these pieces of chicken off. I kind of lightly salted the chicken. All right, guys. Look at this beautiful, nice brown chicken. Remember, you're not cooking it through and through right now. Just getting a good, nice sear, nice brown color. See right there? That's the color you want on that chicken. So we're getting ready to take this off. Again, that's the color you want. You don't want to burn your pot. You don't want to burn the chicken in it. Nice brown chicken. So far, the capon has not disappointed me. Um, it's got a strange little texture to it that I'm seeing, but I, I like it. It's not turkey, it's just, it's, it's a big ass chicken, you know? Uh, a lot of times when you sear off chicken in a pan, like this, uh, the, you know, on a, on a nice cut up fryer, the, the skin's very tender and it tends to melt a little bit. This skin didn't really melt like uh, 
like a normal, you know, cut up fryer that's, you know, made to be tender. So that's good though, because this is going to stew down. We didn't want that, that to just melt away. We want the skin, we want that texture to this meat. Taking these nice little bits, I, I showed you all that little bits that I cut off of the, the back and the bone. And it's got the liver in there, the gizzard, everything. I, I like to use all of that. That's, that's tasty little morsels right here. We're going to set this chicken to the side, let the chicken rest for a few minutes. So, in the hot grease right here, we've got the uh, grease from the bacon, from the chicken fat that's cooked down in there. I lightly salt and peppered this, but the rest of the season's going to go in a little bit later. We've got some carrots, some onions, garlic, and I told you I like a little heat on mine. So, we have a little bit of serrano pepper that's cut up in there. That is not part of this recipe, it's part of mine. So we're going to move this around. Look at this guys. Carrots, onions, garlic, little bit of serrano. So we're going we're gonna to thicken this up a little bit. So we want the gravy a little bit thick, not too bad, not too much. So we're going to take some, just some regular all-purpose flour. We're going to sprinkle it around. So for this size pot, obviously I've got a half a cup right here, but I'm probably only going to use about a, maybe a third of that. And so what that's going to do, it's going to thicken up uh, in that grease. And as we add this chicken back to it, the juices from the chicken, the wine, and all of the vegetables are all going to marry together. And uh, that flour is just a binding agent that's going to thicken up and it's going to intensify and make that gravy nice and thick. So it's looking good right there. Probably add just a little bit more. Just a touch in there. All right. All right, look at this. Looking good. Just going to move this around a little bit. You want that flour. It doesn't have to get brown, brown real dark brown. But you want to move it around, give it a nice little toasty look to it. So now we are going to place our chicken pieces back in the pot right here. Go and get them flat down there. Just like this. Oh, look at this. And, of course, I've got all the bits that we took off of that bone, off of that backbone. We've got liver, we've got heart, we've got the um, the gizzards in there, we've got a little bit of skin, we've got the oyster off of the back of This is the rest of the juice, we'll show you. All the juice that's come up that was on that pan for that chicken that was sitting there. Look at that. You want all of that in there. Yes, sir. And everybody knows what Cookie's favorite part of doing something in the pot is when we're searing off meat, vegetables, and everything. That's right. The wine, guys. We're gonna go right in here. You hear that nice little sizzle? Oh yeah, baby. I smell the red wine, hit the garlic, the onions, the carrots. Uh, the nice, dark, caramelized uh, uh, skin on that chicken. You know what? Might go in with a little bit more, because after all, this is chicken stewed in red wine. I've got some fresh thyme, some nice fresh sprigs of thyme. No need to pull it off of the stem. We're just going to throw that in there like that and let that cook. You can pull the stems out after. The leaves are going to cook off of it. So season to taste, all right? So I'm used to cooking in this pot. I know how much to put in it. So, we're gonna go in with some kosher salt. I've got some Cajun seasoning. Cajun seasoning, if you want seasonal, you can use seasonal. Um, it's just a blend of all your salts, peppers, garlics, black pepper, all that. I've got it measured out right here. You know, uh, that's probably a couple of teaspoons of, of Cajun seasoning. So I'm gonna put this in here, just like this. Everybody knows I like smoked paprika. Man, smoked paprika just adds a nice good flavor. Give it a little helping right here. Some black pepper. Now the Cajun season has some black pepper in it, but that's okay. 
I like a little extra black pepper. Ooh, not that much black pepper, but uh, you know, nice little. I've got the chicken broth right here, and you just pour that chicken broth right over the top of it. It washes all that season that I just put in there. Now your chicken's still gonna make a little juice. You don't have to completely cover it. Again, this isn't a soup or a gumbo. This is all gonna stew down together. We're gonna put a top on this. It's going in the oven. We're gonna put it on. If you've got time, put it at a lower temperature. Low and slow is always good, right? If you're in a little bit more of a rush. So I would put this on at about 300 for about two hours or about 325 for roughly an hour and a half, hour 45 minutes. Well, I'll show you the bag. White pearl onions. See, very simple. Butter and olive oil. Right in there. A little kosher salt. A little black pepper. That's it. Okay. So, all right, guys, as you see, we've got a nice toasted, caramelized uh, pearl onion here. We're going to add just a touch, a shot of cognac to this. Be careful. Going to move this. That's why I tell you, be careful, baby. Going to flip this around a little bit. Oh, look at that nice. Beautiful color to this. We saved our mushrooms because we don't want to put the mushrooms in too early. Mushrooms are nice, beautiful, brown, caramelized color. Put the mushrooms in. We're going to go in with just a, a hair more of kosher salt. Not too much. You can always add, but you can't take away. After you add the mushrooms, you can saute for just a minute or two and you can almost turn them off. Because again, you want your mushrooms to have some consistency. You don't want them to be mush. You don't want them to cook down and shrivel up to nothing. So here you go, guys. We'll show you the finished product in just a minute. So hey, guys. You've all seen the Coco Van stove cooking off. That gravy is nicely cooking off. It's all coming together beautifully. So how are we going to soak up all that beautiful gravy? Well, with some baguette bread. We're going to put some olive oil in a pan. We're going to toast this bread in that pan in olive oil. We're going to get it nice, toasty brown. We're going to sprinkle it with just a touch of kosher salt on top. And guess what? Dip, 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 dip. It's going to be beautiful. Watch this. Hey, I love baguette bread. I mean, I just, it's the end piece. Mm. It's got a nice crunch to it. I mean, it's like a, it's like a real crouton, but you're making it. All right, guys, so we've had this cuckoo van for about an hour and a half. It's been at 325. It's been, you know, just simmering off in here. So the last ingredients that go in, you saw me do the mushrooms and the uh, pearl onions. So we're going to go in right here. We've got them right here. Listen, we didn't cook our mushrooms too much. Go right in. Look at this. It's beautiful. Remember those bacon bits? that we fried off, uh, that we made the grease to start this chicken. That's right, look at this. Going in there, all in there. Hey, look at that. Let's get that all in there. All right. I'm gonna give this a little stir around. We're gonna put the top back on this. All right. We're gonna slide this right back in the oven. We're gonna give it about another 15, 20 minutes. All right. So you're ready for this, guys? Here we go. Coco Van. Look at that. Beautiful. Look at that. Oh, man. Look how, look how that meat just falls apart. Look at that. All right, guys. I hope you had as much fun as we did today. I present to you Coco Van with the Kipal Rooster. That's right, we told you about that earlier. Oh, gosh. The onions, carrots, pearl onion, a little bit of that capon chicken. Gotta get that uh, crostini. Uh, a little bit of bacon on there. Oh, uh, look at that, that's the perfect bite.
Hey on brothers. I hope I lived up to the expectations. I've made this before, but never with a cape on rooster. It's unbelievable. I mean, the, the chicken really did live up to what they said. It's tender, it's not like an old bacon hen or an old rooster or anything like that. Now it was slow cooked and slow roasted. Uh, but you know, comment, comment. Click, click the like button. Tell us what you like, tell us what you don't like. Coco Van. My version. Like it, love it, hate it. Tell me what you like. We'll see you next time. Cook them a cookie, baby! Happen yet, yo? Where'd you get that? I was uh, backpacking across France and uh, stopped into this little chateau and uh, I was talking to the old man that ran it. Like a, like a bed and breakfast? Yeah, it was a bed and breakfast, but they call it a chateau. And uh, I admired the chef's Coco Vin so much that he said, hey, Cookie, I got a, a special gift for you. So what is that? He's like, this is my prize knife. And I said, Jean-Pierre, thank you. My friend, I will remember this. And so to today, this was 20 years ago, but to today, I still carry this, uh, this knife around. It's really an Asian cleaver. You think the French guy is using an Asian cleaver? He got it on his backpack and trip through China back in the 1920s. Hey, there's a story behind everything. Now, sometimes, sometimes that story might be a made-up story, but uh, you know. Three. I'm not ready. Oh, well, I mean, I gotta get the pot hot.